when I'm in that cage, bro, don't touch me, don't talk to me. People don't know, Kobe talk a lot of trash, bro. Yeah. He, he was he was savage at this Sometimes he would say things and we kind of look at him crazy and he meant exactly what he said. Take your ass out there <laughs> and shoot some jump shots <laughs> with your broke ass jump shot mode. <laughs> Fourth quarter starts. <laughs> and Kobe said you had a great game. They called a timeout. He walked past and said, you know, you know, y'all left me too much time, right? Yeah, after that, I'm like, everything that I've heard about Kobe Bryant is all true. People think those stories are like, not real. Like those stories are real. Playing against Kobe, man. Kobe used to talk trash, but it's hard to kind of go back and forth with him. Not only because he shoot a lot, but he making the mother He's a bad man. And you don't get that many attempts. No, not even close. So I got, I finally got a post up on him. You know what I mean? I got the ball on the post. I'm backing him down. You know, I'm looking at him like, I'm a little little nigga. And I'm gonna, you know, that's how I'm looking at him. Hit him with the shoulder. I turn around and shoot it. He just hit my whole arm. The referee's right there. Don't call nothing. Wow! Whole arm off, right? The referee, I'm on the baseline. The referee right there. So I turn and look at the referee. Kobe takes off with the ball. I'm like, what the f You take the ball. Hall of court, right? So you know me, I'm always arguing with the ref. So I'm talking to the referee, arguing with him. As I'm talking to the ref, I'm Kobe is saying something to me. Like, you better pay attention. Like, you know what I'm saying? All that. Because I, I start saying something to Kobe too about hacking ass. You know what I'm saying? I'm in a full argument with the ref, but I'm guarding you at the same time. And so you start telling me, you better pay attention, my <laughs> You better pay attention. So as I'm talking to the referee, Kobe shoots like 10 feet from the three point line. You shoot the from the logo, net, and gives me a little smirk, like, like look at me, and then the referee look at me like, then the referee give me the same little look like, I'm like, so look, this one made it worse. Kobe just run down the court just talking to me like I'm a kid, and next thing you know, Pop just subbed me out the game, so I'm on the sideline looking like I was just a bump, you know what I mean? Then Pop subbed me right out. Of course he I'm did. like, oh, s he go up at 60 and I can't get my get back. Hey man, I just try to with y'all as much as possible. So <laughs> mm -hmm. I just tried to do what I could to take you guys out of the game. Mm -hmm. You know, even if it meant like your replacement. Yeah. The person that was coming in for you guys did a better job guarding me. Yeah. Then I'd be comfortable with that. The person was Bruce Bowen, yeah. didn't mean it somebody else. He's just yeah. knocking us all off. Yeah, and then you wait and wait and then you roast them. And yeah. Then you guys are over there like, what the f am I doing over here? <laughs> <laughs> Our sh was a little bit of back and forth talking that situation in Orlando with the ball fake, but it was more the grabbing, the elbow win. I caught a tip dunk that he tried to block the white shot and he left me open and I went and tip jumped and I was coming off the rim and the fucker tried to elbow me on my nuts. So it just came to a point, like you said, where he fouled you right in front of the refs and the refs act like they motherfucking Ray Charles at the time. Like, you know you fucking saw that. Exactly. Right? Everything. I caught a dunk tip, he elbowed me. I'm just like, what the fuck? And I'm the one getting fouled. I'm the one getting teased. So it just, he tries to mentally fuck you too because physically, you know, there's it, it, not much you can do with him. But he tries to get that mental battle too, whether it's talking elbowing you, pump faking you 18 times, and then you jump and he barely slid, you know, <laughs> slides against you and the ref calls a foul. So he came to a point in Orlando where, I'm like, I might have to fight this dude. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> basketball, <laughs> everything. He was doing all this dirty shit and I would get caught retaliating. So I got a Me couple too. fouls, I got one T. Uh, but it's bullshit, like you said, cause you gotta do everything you can to stop him knowing goddamn well. I know in my situation, he took like 30 shots that game. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you know with me, there was, there was gonna be hard fouls, there was gonna be no easy layups. If you shot fake me too many times, I'm just gonna foul you, <laughs> kid. I'm just gonna foul you hard. You know what I mean? And that's what I explain to people, like great offense is always gonna be great defense. You just wanna make them work for everything. So yeah. if you scored 30 points, I wanted you to take 30 shots. Yeah. So my whole career, I always wore Kobe's. And I remember it was it was a time I played against Vince Carter earlier in my career. And he was like, man, you, you wear those when you play versus Kobe? It was my first time really like thinking about it. Like, so it, it, it dawned on me. So when we played Kobe again, I said, man, I ain't wearing no Kobe. <laughs> Fucking, I ain't wearing them next time I play Kobe. <laughs> yeah. Just, you know what I mean? He ain't about to have no <laughs> mental edge on me. So I remember wearing some Jordan 10s. It's wrong fucking bang I should've did. We walked out on the court. He looked at me, looked at my shoes. I said, that's what the f you doing? The f you got on your feet? <laughs> I said, he just shook his head at me. End up killing them. Right? <laughs> the game was close. We kept it close. They get the rebound, call the timeout. They call the timeout. He walked past and said, you know, you know, y'all left me too much time, right? So came out, hit the game with him. Walking off the court, he said, yeah, don't wear them shits ever again. <laughs> I've never put on a pair of Jordans again. And then, and again. People don't know, Kobe talk a lot of trash, bro. Yeah. It might not be curse words, it might be nothing like that, but it's just what he gonna do to you. 
And he'll tell you before he do it. And he'll still do it. He'll still do it. You- I never told the story. We was in Charlotte and we was in the huddle and he was like, uh, the game was tied. It was only like four seconds, three seconds on the shot clock. Rudy T is like drawing up all type of shit on the board and he swiped it off again. Whoever our coach was at the time, he was drawing up the play. Kobe just like wiped the board real quick. He was like, hey, that, just give me the ball right here. And uh, he was like, whoever want to take the ball out gonna be part of history. <laughs> Who the f- want to be part of history? Like, Lamar was like, I, I want to be part of history. Like, he's like, I, you take the ball out, I'm gonna get open right here, throw it to me, everybody run, like, out the tunnel, game. I give the ball. He threw that shit in, man. Kobe hit the shot, blouse this game. It was just like. And literally looked right at me, winked his eye, like I told you, like game. And everybody just like ran, grabbed him, went through the tunnel, and literally the rest was history. Damn. True story, dog. Like real time. Nobody knew where to go on the court. Just like, hey, he's going to catch it somewhere right here. Just get the out the way. And that's what happened. He, OG was different, man. He was different. But that was him. Like right. that was just who he was. JJ Reddick and Cole and Team USA. Like we was locked in and we were preparing to go play against the Ginobili's and the Rudy Fernandez's around the world. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like just JJ Reddick type of style players. And I remember Cole couldn't stand JJ Reddick. <laughs> so he coming to practice. I hope somebody vouch for me on this story. I swear to <laughs> God. And if anybody was on that, they know. You know, people know. Yeah. They might have their own but people know. Yeah. The moral of the story is Cole took it personal against J.J. Reddick in, in practice because he got tired of Coach K kept talking about J.J. Reddick, right? Cole took it very, very personal to the point where he was running through screens in practice. He was denying J.J. The boy he was fouling the shit out J.J. I'm like, damn, why are you treating a young boy like that? <laughs> that motherfucker. That's it, what's the problem? That's what, exactly what the, how he what, was. What's, what's the problem? Uh, Coach K keep talking about this motherfucker. Like he he come up here to do something. F- this motherfucker. Like I'm the you know I'm always the the light of the room. You know what I mean? So I'm like, yo, look at this thing, man. This thing is bugged out. Why are you chasing JJ like that? <laughs> he running them down on you. No, he, he was running them down. I'm like, damn. My welcome to the league. Well, it was training camp. That was one. Okay. I probably say the first time. Cole cussed me out. We in the locker room talking, and somebody had told me something about Cole, what Kobe had said in the media. And I was like, bro, Kobe say this or whatever? Me and Nick, somebody else, we talking, and then Kobe come in, <laughs> right? <laughs> so Nick, bro, he like, hey, Kobe, Juice said that. <laughs> <laughs> and Kobe was like, what? Like, so we having this whole conversation. I don't even remember what he said, bro, yeah. in the convo. I just remember he ended it with, take your ass out there <laughs> and shoot some jump shots <laughs> with your broke ass jump shot, <laughs> And I was hurt. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I was like, this is my idol. I'm yeah. hurt. <laughs> and sure enough, that's what I went out there and did. <laughs> okay. And anybody know Cole, Cole respects you if you a dog and you're going to go at him. You go back at him. And that's when Cole started to respect me when he realized, like, I'm not backing down. And it's not that attention. It's just who I am. I mean, me and Cole, we got into a little tussle in the All-Star game a little bit, and I ended up hitting him the wrong way and broke his nose. That was the first time I've ever seen that. But I'm, but I'm gonna say the thing. Okay, so after All Star break, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. we got the Lakers about like three games after yes, the break. Yes, he got the mask he on. He got the mask yes. on. So I, but you know what? I call him. You know, I'm not maliciously, didn't maliciously do it. I call him and I say, Yo, Cole. He was like, Bro, I love it. I'm like, You what? He's like, I love it. I seen a couple of days. I felt like, oh, this, <laughs> oh, snap. And, when he, and he gave it to me too, boy. Competitively, Cole was just, he was different. You know, sometimes he would say things and we kind of look at him crazy and he meant exactly what he said. Sometimes he would say some wow shit, yo. Like we'd be sitting on the With train a straight table and it'd be like, I ain't asking him nothing, nothing. He'd come out of nowhere and you'd be like, uh, with a straight, what? With, a straight <laughs> with a straight face. We was in Denver, we was getting our ass kicked. And Will Barton was going crazy. I think Will probably had like 25 at halftime. The Will Barton going off. He was on a run. He was playing really well. He was going off. Man. Coach Scott came in and he said uh, we were making adjustments to Will and we were changing our coverage. And Cope said that I got him. And everybody kind of looked at him. Byron was going to keep talking and Cope said, no, like, don't worry about him. I'll take care of him. Like, he won't even exist in the second half. And that man said, I'm going to guard Will Barton in the second half. He's not even going to exist. <laughs> <laughs> but Will had 25 at halftime. 
<laughs> so we look around like, all right, all right, go ahead, OG. Because, you know, they was trying to fight to get in the playoffs. Uh -huh. So yeah, I remember he yelled at Wes, and then the next thing I know, he was gone. Oh, it was like, man, it's on. That's how I was. <laughs> I, I had just played well. I just hit my first yeah. shot. So you feel I'm good. going up against, you know, who right. I think the greatest player of all the time. And we're thinking to ourselves, like, this dude is cooking. Like, nobody's going to stop him at this point. You know, he already has 25 and a half. His confidence is sky high. And um, he just stuck guarding me at the free throw line. I got the ball at the three point line. He always had the free throw line. <laughs> And I told him I've been good. I've been good my whole life. Yeah. I've been the bad my whole life. I never had nobody guard me like that. Yeah. So it messed me up psychologically. I'm like, yeah, what's going what on? I don't know what to do. So I'm like, I don't know if I should pass. I don't know if I should shoot. I'm like, should I try to drive? I'm like, why is he giving me so much space? I'm just yeah. holding the ball. And man, it got to my head. Then again. Two points after that. Mm. And he guarded him. And he guarded him. Then shut him down. Like, we're gonna score the whole second half and wheel nice. And scored a whole second half. Cole went out and guarded him that second half, and Will Barton had two points the second half. And when he put his mind to something, he meant it. He was going to get it done one way or another. He got to my head. I'm hitting the crowd. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Yeah. And now I'm so nervous about shooting the ball. I'm so messed up. I really don't want to shoot it. Now yeah. I shoot it, that thing ain't going in. Did Kobe say anything to you guys during that second half when he was locking up? No, he was locked in. It was okay. like, it's Kobe Bryant, so it's not like a I told you so thing, you know. I think one of Kobe's biggest competitors was was himself. You know, I don't I don't really think that he looked at other guys when he's inside of the lines when he's playing and thinking that I'm in competition with this guy. I, I always felt like, you know, no matter what, he felt like he had a chance to win the basketball game or accomplish whatever he put his mind to inside the line. So, I guarded Kobe in the garden. I can't remember how much he had, but I knew I had multiple steals against him to where in the game, all, in my head, all I'm thinking of is when I have this conversation with my brother after the game, how I'm gonna tell him how I stole a ball from Kobe, how I stripped Kobe before he was gonna take a shot, how I drove by Kobe and got a dunk. Like, I'm thinking about all these things in my head. I'm like, so geek. Fourth quarter starts. <laughs> and Kobe said, you had a great game. But I'm looking like, bro. There's still another quarter. I'm look, I swear I looked at the clock like, it's 12 minutes, what you talking about? <laughs> like, what you? What was that? You know what I'm saying? Like, you ain't said nothing the whole game. I've been talking shit. I done stole the ball. I'm hyped as hell. It's Kobe Bryant. He ain't said not one word to me. The man come down. You remember he came, shot fake, shot fake, threw it off the glass, caught it, threw it to the corner. I'm like, bro, what you on? <laughs> <laughs> like, bro, you been regular all game. <laughs> he started hitting me, two dribble, pass yeah. it, get it back. Right. Yeah. But everything he did was sharp <laughs> shot. Get to the spot, shot fake. Spin, pivot over here, spin back on the foot, drop it off the glass. I'm like, bro, what's going on? Then he pulled up from like 35 feet on some Steph Curry before yep. Steph was doing that. <laughs> he pulled up and laced it. I'm like, they called a timeout. Dan Tony looking at me. I'm like, bro, I ain't. <laughs> like that chop move where I'm thinking this dribble, dribble, dribble and chop, and now I'm trying to get you to pick your dribble up. Mm -hmm. Kobe always had a live dribble. And then he started realizing that I was counting his dribbles. <laughs> So, yeah. <laughs> nah, bro, I guarded the first two moves. He ain't supposed to have a third counter like that. I thought that was a travel. His feet shouldn't even be able to move. <laughs> that was great footwork, coach. I, I just can't do coach, it. Coach, bravo. <laughs> he can't even sit me down for this. Like right, this, right. This was great defense, and I'm thinking in my head, damn, that whole, like, good game I thought I was having is just gone. I've never seen nothing like that. I, I knew for sure Rick Fox, my teammates, they all thought I was absolutely crazy the day me and Shaq got in a fist fight. I think I can remember the, the, the first time we had our first fight um, and you looked and said, okay, this is crazy. I did say that. Yeah, you I said, did. Yeah, you did. Crazy. You did. Anyway, we were, we, I, it was, we were playing a pickup game. We were doing a lockout season, Southwest College, playing a pickup game. We we're on opposite teams. Right. And trash talking. Yes. And you kept saying, yeah, take that little Take that little I'm looking around. Oh, fucking me. Yes. <laughs> right? And yeah. I said, well, hold on. Ain't going to be too many more of those little, you know. Yeah, I remember that. And what'd you say? Well, what you going to do about it? Uh -huh. What you going to do about it? And then that's the next thing I knew. I saw a big hand coming this way. And I remember going this way. <laughs> and I remember throwing some lollipop <laughs> golden Polynesian came and caught. <laughs> and then they all just kind of broke us apart, broke yeah. us up. That, that day was a big turning point for him because it was like, you know, he's generally used to 
talking trash and saying what he wants and nobody really stepping up and challenging him on that. And when he saw me challenge him on that, he was like, this kid's crazy. All right, I can win with that. And then from that moment on, I knew we spoke the same language. Doesn't matter if we had disagreements with any other, our drive to win, like we have to win. There's, there's no other option. I kind of perpetuated it out of the locker room because I, one thing I understood was marketing. So, yeah, I don't like him. He don't like me and everybody talked about us. Kind of went too far to where people kind of believed it. But if you believed it, if we believed it, you think we went three out of four? If it was real, you think that when we won our first championship, 30,000 people in the arena, one guy runs and jumps in my arm. So it's, all it was was a respectful big brother, little brother relationship. After that day, they were like, okay, Kobe, you're certifiable. Uh, <laughs> hey, bro, bro, that's hilarious. I must have been a crazy <laughs> He was this way. He was a, yeah, I meant to miss me by inches. <laughs> Did we get along all the times on the court? No. But we know in sports, that's how it is in the locker room. Well, I, you know, I'm, I'm obsessive. And I believe we need to work night and day, figure out how to get to where we need to go. He wanted to do it a different way. And so there was constant challenge there to get that done. But I wasn't going back down from it. And neither was he. He felt I should play a certain way to get the ball into him. I said, I'll give the ball into you if you work. If you don't work, you don't get the ball. He said, throw me the ball. No. Work. My first year we were playing, and uh, he kept posting up. But they kept fouling him. So he kept going to the free throw line and kept missing him. And so he throw the ball out to me. I'm not throwing that shit back in there. <laughs> Right? So I kept shooting him, right? So we get in the timeout, and he's like, hey, hey, uh, hey, I'm open. I'm like, okay. And so we go out, and same thing, come, hey, 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 I'm open. Okay. There you go. <laughs> come back in, hey, dude, you got to throw me the ball. I said, man, f that. Get it off the rebound if I miss, bro. <laughs> 18 years old, man. 18 years old. <laughs> and I must have been out of my damn mind. The guys were complaining. I said, Shaq, Kobe's not passing the ball. I said, I'll talk to him. I said, Kobe, there's no I in team. And Kobe said, I know, but there's an ME in that <laughs> So I went back and told Rick and, uh, and Big Shot Bob, I said, just get the rebound. He's not passing. We were in Vegas, and Coach drew up a play for him at the top of the key to go ISO one-on-one. -on -one. As they're leaving the huddle, he's telling everybody, I'm about to dunk on this fool. I'm about to dunk on this fool. Basically a one-on-one -on -one situation. Everybody was watching those two, and we didn't know what he was going to do. And when he finished the play, which was dunking the ball through the basket. Here we got a dribble drive, change of direction by Brian. Slam dunk. I don't think our reactions was because of the dunk. Our reaction was because he said he was about to do that dunk. And that's why we were just like, oh my God, we cannot believe he just said what he was going to do and he did it. And it was spectacular at the same time. Not trying to dunk it in the ball, going in the stands. He really finished the play and that let everybody know that here's a guy who's going to be special in this league for a long time to come. It was one of the craziest things because, you know, you guys say stuff all the time. But to hear from a rookie, who never really played NBA games said, I'm about to dunk on this fool. That was one of the special moments of Kobe. And like, you knew he was gonna take off from there. You just knew it.